Has it ever happened to you that you're making your game but it doesn't look as pretty as it should be? Even with mega scans and all these beautiful assets, there's something that is lacking. You see, the world of visual arts is different from the real world. Artists, instead of using logical language, they use visual cues to communicate with the audience and other artists. For example, a person may be looking at this picture and think the elements it has is a car, a mountain, and a building. Whereas artists are thinking about shapes, color, contrast, value, or color harmony, the difference is so big that it is as if two people were trying to communicate in two different languages. In this lesson, you will learn about the shape language. We will use Final Fantasy XIV as an example, because it's been over a decade since it launched and its graphics still hold up. They didn't use Unreal 5 and all those crazy features that you now have, but they had great artists. So let's start to define what are shapes. If you ever draw when you were a kid, maybe your drawings look like this one. This is because as kids, our logical brain is not as developed as adults, so we see things like circles, squares, and triangles. Everything you see in the world is made of shapes. The ability of the artist is to communicate using shapes and not logic and reason. Let's take a look at this environment. If you take a look at it, you will see, oh, it has statues, it has bricks, it has supports, it has like cobblestones, it has all these architectural elements that compose the scene. Let's take a look at this statue. If we struck the contours and see the silhouette, we will have something like this. And if we simplify it even more, we have a triangle which stands for stability in the design language. The whole world is filled with triangles here. The statues, the buildings, the ground, everything is a triangle. Now, you don't need to use the same shape every time. The beauty of an image actually comes from the variation of the shapes. Let's take a look at the ground. Did you notice that it's not only the bricks? It has small squares, big squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, and many more interesting shapes like the cobblestones. It is the combination of all these shapes combined that will make your game look better. Let's change the environment we had at the beginning. I will start by changing the floor by adding more variation and changing the wall material to have different shapes. I will then change the material of the floor and add different patterns to make it look more interesting. Then I will make this wall look better by adding a smaller shape and having a different pattern on it. Then I will just duplicate this pattern and put it around the wall so I can have more variation. The longer I repeat something, the more interesting it becomes. I will now add a different shape to my environment. This time it will become a triangle, so I will use the modeling tools to create a different shape and then put it on the wall to break the repetition we created before. Now I will play with the position of the shape and put it in different locations so that my environment can have the same shape language. You can see how adding different shapes to our environment, now suddenly our box is much more interesting than before. I hope that after you know these principles, you can also make your game look prettier. If you want to learn how to create games, make sure to check our channel where we have tons of free content for you. And if you want to learn how to create a game from scratch, make sure to check our action game course and start the first lesson for free today.